So I recently spoke to a trader who's currently making $2,500 a week trading options. I'm the head options trader on our options trading desk here at SMB Capital, and we actually talk to traders like him all the time. Most retail traders would die to know how he's doing this, and I'll show you that shortly, but you need to stay with me on this to really understand the full implications of what he's doing. He's missing something huge, so stick around because it's important. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. Now, you want to click our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos produced for the trading and investing community. Okay, so I was contacted a few weeks ago by a very diligent and sincere trader who had developed a technique that was netting him $2,500 a week using a very simple technique that I'll show you in a minute. He was applying for a spot on our trading desk, and so we were having a serious discussion, which involves me probing about the risks and the rewards of what he was doing. And it was clearly evident to me early on in our discussion that this trader was an honest person, excited about the trading approach that he had developed, and which was in fact bringing him $2,500 a week in income, which is awesome. So let's give you the basics of what he was doing, and then we can jump into the meat of my conversation with him, which was very important. In order to do so, I need to make sure you understand the basics of options. For those of you who are new to options trading, you'll need to listen closely. For those of you who are experienced traders, this will be quick, and then we'll jump into the core of my discussion with this trader. Now, almost all of you are probably familiar with equity options, where a call buys you the right to buy 100 shares of a stock at the strike price, of that option any time before the option expires, and a put option entitles you to sell 100 shares at the strike price of the put before that option expires. But there are also index options, which work similarly to equity options, except that there are no such thing as 100 shares of an index like the S&P 500. You can't really buy or sell 100 shares of an index, but what you can do is get paid in cash. $100 per point if the index expires above the strike price of an index call that you buy, or alternatively, you'd be paid $100 per point for each point the index drops below the strike price of your index put. So for example, if an index is trading at 1400 and you buy the 1410 call, if the index goes to 1415, you'd receive $500 in your account. If the index closes at 1410 or lower, your call expires worthless. On the other side of the ledger, if you buy a 1385 put and the market sells off to 1375, you'd make $1,000. But if the market just sold off to 1385 or higher, the put would expire worthless. So those are the basics of index options. And remember, you can buy options, but your broker will also allow you to sell options as well. And your broker will allow you put, to put together combinations of options. In other words, option strategies that involve both short and long options purchased in a way that's advantageous to you as a trader. There are SPX options expiring all the time, but what this trader does is he focuses on the Wednesday and Friday expirations of SPX options, and he does this pretty much every week. So what he does is to execute a trade called, in options terminology, a credit spread each week in which he sells a put option a certain distance below the market and then buys in the same expiration cycle a put option a little farther below the market than the put option that he sold. So in a minute, I'm going to be showing you the details of how this trade works, and then you'll be able to understand the critical conversation that he and I had about the nature of this trade and the proper mindset that he'll need to trade it. Before I get into this though, I wanted to mention that we're currently running a two hour free intensive workshop at the moment. So if you'd like to learn three additional real world option strategies that our traders use, including a really simple and effective strategy that some of the greatest investors in the world, like Warren Buffett, use all the time, plus an options trading strategy that has a statistical 80% probability of profit month in and month out, plus an option strategy that you can employ with the stock that you like, where you'll make your target profit, whether the stock goes up, goes nowhere, or even goes down a small percentage, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free registration page in a new window. 
or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It's a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. So now back to this weekly credit spread strategy that this trader was executing twice a week. Let's break down what he was doing carefully. Now, this trader's goal is to bring in at least $25 per credit spread, and he plans to sell 50 credit spreads each trade, which is at least $1,250 per trade, and he does this trade twice a week, so he's making about $2,500 a week. So let's see how he accomplishes that in this particular recent example, and that is by selling 50 of the 29.90 puts for $1.38 per contract, and buying 50 of the 29.85 puts for $1.10 per, per contract, as you can see on this options chain. So this trader's goal is to bring in at least 1250 each trade when he first initiates the trade. Now, in this case, as you can see from the example, the trader sold 50 of the 29.90 puts for $1.38. So the math is $1.38 times 100, because he gets $100 for each point below the strike price of 29.90 if you own that put, as we mentioned before, times 50, because he sold 50 of those for a total cash infusion into his account of $6,900. Then he simultaneously pays out $1.10 per option for protection. So if the market really tanks, there's a limit to how much of a hit he'll take. So in this case, that protection cost him $1.10 times 100 times 50 of those protective puts for a total cost of $5,500. So net, he brings in $1,400 for these 50 credit spreads. Now, the market's trading at 3010 and he sold the 2990 puts, so his short puts, the one he sold, were 20 points below the market. Other weeks, they'll be closer to the market, and some weeks, they'll be farther from the market depending upon conditions in the options market. So he does the same trade Tuesday at afternoon for the Wednesday trade and Thursday afternoon for the Friday trade each week, and his short puts will be as far from the markets as he can get and still receive a net of at least 25 cent credit per spread. Well, in this case, he actually got 28 cents because the short puts were trading at $1.38 and the long puts were trading at $1.10. So the net of those is 28 cents, and so he got a little more than he would normally get having received $1,400 credit for this week's spread. So let's see what happened in this case, and some things will come clear to you from this example. So the next day, the SPX index closed at 29.92, meaning that the short put at 29.90 and the long put at 29.85 will both expire worthless. Let's try to internalize what that means. Why did both options expire worthless? Because if you recall, with index options, they are what is called cash settled, meaning the options pay off in cash, not stock. So if a put is below the expiration price of the index, then there's no obligation to pay the owner off and it, it expires worthless. So both options expire worthless and we just pocket the $1,400 as our profit. So that one worked out pretty well. And this guy's been doing this each week, usually twice a week, all year. So that's very impressive if you can reliably do that each week. But there's an important point that the trader was missing. What would happen with this very same strategy if the next morning, let's say after some ominous sounding presidential tweet about China or something scary sounding, that the market would gap down and close 30 points below our entry price, which was 3010. Now that doesn't happen all that often, but when it does, let's see what would have happened to his trade. In this hypothetical case, Let's take it option by option. Now, the 2985 option, which we're long, is five points in the money. So that one would pay the trader five points times 100 times 50 options that he owns for a gain of $25,000. But the 2990 put that we're short, well, we're going to lose $50,000 because it's 10 points in the money. So the loss on that will be double the gain on the 2985 that we were long or $50,000. And of course, we got the original credit of 1400 for the spread in the first place. But still, if you add it all up, the loss would be 23600 Well, if he is making about $2,500 a week on this trade, except when he loses, and when he loses, he takes, in, he takes a hit of 23600 then it will take about 10 weeks for him to get back to break even. And here's the really crucial message of this video. How exactly shall we react to this realization? Well, in talking with this trader, at first he sort of protested that he had been trading this for nine months, 
has never experienced a loss, and he was careful to avoid overnight situations that could give rise to gaps down. But of course, the fallacy in that is that you can't predict an overnight surprise. So should he just give up on the trade because of the risk, despite his outstanding experience with it? Well, that was not the advice I gave him, which might surprise you. But let me explain my reasoning. You see, as it turns out, if you do the math, if you do this twice a week and make 1250 most of the time, but four times out of the year you get this total loss, you'd still have over 100% annualized return on the trade. If it happens five times a year, you'd make a little under 50% a year. Only if it happens six times or more would you lose money on the trade. So the question is, how often will, on a Wednesday morning or Friday morning, we get a large sell-off that doesn't come back before the end of the day? Well, nobody knows that intuitively, so it needs to be back-tested to get a feel for how often these loss events are likely to happen so that he can come up with some final conclusions on what can be expected of this trade in the long term. So I gave him some ideas on what backtesting software he should consider acquiring and asked him to contact me again once he had determined the frequency of these loss events to see if the trade can work over the long term. Now you can also overlay this trading style with indicators and other common sense factors and perhaps improve your win rate on the trade, but you'd have to subject those to back tests as well, obviously. So at the end of the day, either way, the trader has to do some homework and come back to me, and then we'll see if we have something to talk about. So what I'd like you to take away from today's video is a really important trading lesson. If you have had a winning streak on a certain strategy, it's really foolish to assume that that winning streak will continue forever. You may have a really great trading idea, and it may provide you with an outstanding return even considering the occasional losses, but if you don't study it carefully and include the occasional losses into your overall calculations, you basically have no chance of being a successful trader. But if you do your homework and realize, say in this case, that if the event happens on average less than five times a year, you'd make over 100% return, then, well, you might want to take that strategy seriously. But you won't know until you do the research, and that takes work and study. That's the way you'll become a great trader through coming up with potentially great trading ideas and then testing them scientifically to see if your hypothesis was right. Now, just to remind you, as I said earlier, if you enjoyed this video and would like to learn three more real world option strategies that professional options traders use all the time, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of the screen. This will open the free registration page in a new window, or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It is an unusual opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click that link and sign up now. And one more thing I'd like you to do is to go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of our trading videos produced for the trading and investing community. And while you're at it, Please add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like us to produce next, as well as what you found helpful from this video. So from all of us here at SMB, trade well.